China is holding military exercises in the disputed South China Sea, coinciding with US President Joe Biden's visit to the South Korea and Japan that largely focused on countering perceived threat from Beijing. The Maritime Safety Administration Office in the Southern Island Province of Hainan said that drills began Thursday and will continue through Monday. It said the other aircraft and the vessels were prohibited from entering the area but gave no further details. China claims the South China Sea virtually in its entire tray and the crucial waterway has become a potential flashpoint for the conflict in Asia, according to the Economic Times of India. The US does not take any foreign positions on the sovereignty issue but insists on the right to operate freely in the sea and frequently sails warships closer to the militarized Chinese-held island in the area of what is termed freedom of navigation operations. China routinely protests such missions, labeling them deliberate provocations that endanger peace and stability. Does such as claim, it has built airstrips and other military infrastructures atop human-made islands built on a coral reef and atolls. Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan also have overlapping claims in the South China Sea. Since the beginning of the month, China's first aircraft carrier, the Luoning, has been conducting a mission in the Sea of Japan, described by the Ministry of Defense as a routine training aimed at the boosting performance that is in the line with the relevant international law and international practice and not targeting any party. China also flew a pair of long-range, nuclear-capable H6 bombers through the area on Wednesday. Chinese media reports say about this. While in Japan, Biden will meet on Tuesday with fellow leaders of the Indo-Pacific Strategic Alliance known as the Quad, a group that includes Australia, India and Japan. The four nations share the concerns over the China's growing regional assertiveness and increasingly capable armed forces. China views the grouping as a part of the US-led push to impede its economic and the political rise and frustrate its attempt to intimidate self-governing Taiwan into accepting its demands to accept Beijing's rule. On Wednesday, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi criticized what he called the negative moves by the Washington and Tokyo against Beijing during a video call with Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi. What arouses attention and vigilance is the fact that even before the American leader has set out for the meeting, the so-called joint Japan-US anti-China reward is already kicking up dust, said Wang on his statement. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and please support us by clicking the thanks button below our video. Right now, India is hunting high-tech military weapons, vehicles, types of equipment, and fighter jets. And now India is looking to buy the new advanced main battle tank for the Indian Army. Earlier, India had deployed a large number of T-90 Bhishma tanks along with T-72 tanks in various sectors of the Ladakh region. This was in a response to China's deploying its Type 15 light tanks that are suitable for high-altitude regions. There were reports of delivery of an advanced version of Type 15 tanks to PLA Xinjiang military commands recently. Russia's T-14 Armata tanks would be capable of operating in temperature as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius with installation of mobile power stations that ensure the immediate and smooth engine starts even in extreme cold weather. This new feature would be advantageous for the India to deploy the tanks, which it decides to buy it, in extreme cold regions where the mercury plummets to minus 40 degrees Celsius in the winter. The Russian military of defense had earlier announced the production of the advanced T-14 Armata main battle tanks. It was followed by reports that Moscow has planned of working with the foreign customers in 2021 and that it had already received the request for the tanks. The potential clients include Egypt, Vietnam, Belarus and India. According to reports, however, India has not officially made any announcement yet. The defense writer Peter Shuai believes India's interest in procuring the advanced T-14 Armata tank is not a big surprise. 
He says that India's traditional military partnership with Russia is one of the factors as to why the country continues to buy defense equipment from the nation. As India has more than 80% of its purchases with military equipment and everything is from Russia. While India has shown that it can sustain itself on its own and produce weapons with its nation's interest. It may not be an averse to the ideas of buying in T-14 Armata tanks. It is worth mentioning that New Delhi is set to acquire Russian S-400 air defense system despite the risk of US sanctions which may or may not happen. The T-14 Armata main battle tank is based on the Armata Universal Combat Platform, the first series produced next generation tank. According to globalsecurity.org, the Armata Universal Combat Platform is a unified heavy platform created for a variety of armored vehicles, including the main battle tank, infantry waiting vehicles, armored personal carriers, among others. First demonstrated during the Victory Parade in Moscow of 2015, the T-14 Armata has fully digitized equipment, an unmanned turret, and an isolated armored capsule for the crew. These advanced tanks are Russia's answer to US M1 Abrams, the third generation battle tanks, which destroyed 37 of Soviet designed T 72s during the 1991 Gulf War. According to the Army technology, the tanks are equipped with active production systems that can intercept and destroy the incoming rockets or missiles. The active production system is designed in a manner so that it can work against all types of anti-tank missiles and rockets, including the handheld weapons as such as the rocket-propelled grenades. If India indeed goes ahead with the procurement of T-14 main battle tanks, they could serve as a powerful deterrent to China, which is unlikely to purchase the Russian-made tanks. Moreover, the timing could not be any better for India as Russia is also eager to find a customer to subsidize the cost of the tanks. So what do you think of India's hunting for a high-tech military main battle tanks for its Indian military?